Welcome into a week five edition of Football Friday Night, a very wet edition of Football Friday Night. What did Matt just say? Tonight with the rain, it's kind of like the lottery. Well, if I played, I certainly didn't win. Both, I think both you and I <laughs> lost. We definitely did not hit the jackpot. The only jackpot we hit was the rain. Yeah, hopefully my hair's still doing okay because <laughs> I'm not used to, uh, to being out there in the rain. But uh, enough about us. Those kids are the ones who uh, like to be in the rain, unlike us. So let's get to tonight's action. Absolutely. Tonight we start things off with our five news game of the week where the stakes were riding high out in the yeah, 4-0 Charleston, 4-0 Cedarville. Cedarville hasn't beaten Charleston in over 30 years, so could the Pirates break that streak tonight? Well, early on, Daryl Kadich, he's going to get the ground game going for Cedarville. Cedarville, he puts the Tigers on their heels, allowing Hayden Partain to rumble in his way, make it 6-0. Pirates two-point conversion, no good. Charleston on the move now. Brandon Scott threading the needle on the move, finding a wide open Reese Mercheca, who finally gets dragged out of bounds at the 10. Like the hustle there. Then Brevin Ketter, he's going to pound it in from the five to get Charleston on the board. They would convert the PAT to take a 7-6 to six lead. Then the two-headed monster combo for the Pirates added again. Partain with some great vision to get the Pirates close, and they would go on to score two plays later to take a 12-7 lead. But we get a shootout in Cedarville. The Tigers answer right back. Ketter, another touchdown. 14-12, Charleston. Cedarville, back with the ball, back and forth. Killing time on their next possession. Cody Dickens showing off his arm. Bradley Perkins brings it in. But following the catch, the Pirates go on to score. It's not a Cedarville highlight without Kadich getting some action here, taking the pitch outside. And there he goes, the two-point conversion to give the Pirates a 20 to 14 lead with less than two minutes to go in the first half in the 30 year winning streak. Well, it continues for Charleston. They move to five and zero on the season and a perfect two and zero here in conference play. Over in the 7A, a packed house at Fayetteville as they welcome undefeated Rogers. We'll pick things up in the first half. The Purple Dogs already up 14-0. And check out the play by Fayetteville's Ryan Maxwell. Tips Noah Goodshield's pass and comes down with the interception. Good field position, but it would get to fourth and 17 for Fayetteville. That's no problem, though, for Blading Fike. The QB <laughs> draw, and he scrambles his way all the way to the end zone for the touchdown on fourth and goal from the 17. You don't see that. I guess no problem. All right, I like it. But the Mountaineers would immediately respond on the next drive. Third play of the ensuing drive, good shield. Deep over the middle, and he hits Joshua Shepard right in stride. He tells the Fayetteville defender, hey, you can't catch me. Turns on the Jets for the 82-yard touchdown. Rodgers finally on the board. The Purple Dogs offense was too much tonight, though. They get down into the red zone again on their next drive, and this time it's Spike going to his main man. Isaiah Satenia in the corner of the end zone. The Oregon commit hauls it in. We knew he was going to come in the highlight at some point. He's he, there every week. He appears every week. Fayetteville puts an end to Rogers' undefeated start in convincing fashion, 48-13. to 13. And when we return, we head to Kirsten Wiley in Oklahoma. Yeah, undefeated Vian travels to roll in that coming your way when Football Friday Night rolls on. Welcome back into Football Friday Night Week 5 edition. Under first-year head coach Zach Watson, Elkins, they couldn't have asked for a better start to the season. No, they couldn't have. The Elks are 3-0, including a dominant performance last week in their conference opener. Yeah, dominant is a great word to put it. So what would they have in store for us tonight as they played host to the Huntsville Eagles? This one started about 45 minutes late because of lightning in the area. But once we got going, the Eagles provided the thunder. See what I did there? Second possession, <laughs> junior Amos Mays hits Tucker Bradley over the middle. Perfect execution and Huntsville had a 7-0 lead. Later in the first half, they're at it again. The Eagles lefty quarterback, he's going to scramble to that left side, finds Cooper Shepard, he makes the grab, hits a move, and he refuses to go down. He says, I didn't wait in the rain to, uh, to come out and not play. <laughs> Elkins trail 14-0, but they're undefeated for a reason. They head to the air here. A deep ball It's going to find the hands of Elijah Graham. That's a pretty toss. Off to the races. Long touchdown for the Elks. They cut the Huntsville lead in half. And they would go on to cruise the rest of the way. So Huntsville had a 14 to nothing lead, but Elkins goes on to score 34 unanswered points. This one, though, still tighter than most for Watson's squad, but the Elks get the job done. They improved to 4-0 on the year and 2-0 here in conference play. That's a way to finish the job. Across state lines and into Oklahoma, Vian visiting Roland. 
We'll pick things up with the Rangers. Down a few scores early, but they fight back. Jackson Faust throws it to Cortland Oliver on the screen pass. He's got blockers. He's got grass. He's got space. And he's got six points. Roland's first score of the game. But this night belongs to the Wolverines. The handoff to Deshaun Mays. He tries to go to the outside to the right, but that's blocked off. So watch this. One cutback, <laughs> and then a second cutback. He's got free real estate all the way to the house, and it's 35 to 7 by him. Was he really running that quick? <laughs> I think so. That wasn't sped up at all. That's just what your eyes made you think. But Mace, he wasn't done yet. Later in the game, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Vian goes back to the Mace well, and it works again. Another nice game for the first down and a touchdown. Vian rolls into Roland and hangs a 50 burger. 55 21, the final for the Wolverines. Making me hungry there, a little 50 burger action. Next, we're going to head over to Alma. Airedale's playing host to Harrison, but Harrison up 35 to 7 to start the second half, an uphill battle. But the Airedale showing some life here. Joe Trusty with the handoff to Devin Poole, who finds some space, and he goes airborne, reaching for oh, the pylon. Ruled out of bounds, so close, but don't worry. Next play, Airedale's won't be denied. Connor Stacy takes it in from the 1, 35 to 14. They're climbing back on the ensuing Goblins possession. I do like that team name. Kalen Madden, he's gonna hit space, count him up, five Alma defenders finally able to wrestle him down. The Goblins keep up right where they left off as Brody Gillum runs it in for the touchdown. They had a 42 to 14 lead and things go downhill for Alma. Bryant with a textbook tackle, puts his hat on the ball, forcing the fumble on the kick return. Goblins recover, they're forced to punt. Alma though, they couldn't get back into this one. Harrison would go on to knock off the Airedales 42 to 41, to th uh, 21, excuse me. The Goblins doing big things in October, not a coincidence if you ask me. <laughs> Let's go to the 3A. Greenland and Arkansas commit JJ Hollingsworth hosting Mansfield. Some good rain coming down at the start, but that couldn't stop the Pirates. Max Meredith on first and 18, hits Caden Watts down the sideline, and you're gonna see our camera cover right there to make sure we got that sweet shot. Watts was off to the races, an 80-yard touchdown on the opening drive. It's 6-0 Pirates after the missed extra point. Still in the first half, Pirates with the ball again. We saw Meredith's arm, now we get to see his legs. That's what we call a dual-threat quarterback. His coach was yelling at him to turn it up the field, and that's what he does. All the way down to the 15 before getting knocked out, and that set up this. Just a couple plays later, Meredith, he's going to pitch it out to Seth Carter, and he ends up wiggling his way into the end zone. 12 0 Pirates, and they cruise past the Tigers for the 36 6 victory. Jonathan, let me get this right. So you brought it up with the Goblins, then we have the Pirates. So if you are a good Halloween costume, you're going to perform in October? This is your month to shine, pick up some conference wins, and get some dubs on the screen. All right, spooky hours, scary season, <laughs> uh, maybe. You know, reverse that, but that's okay. Yeah. So after the break, we're going to head back to Oklahoma where we're going to finish things off for the night. A game with big time implications in the foray with Muldrow playing host to Salisaw. One and three Muldrow hosting one and three Salisaw. Both teams needing a win, trying not to fall too far behind here in conference standings. Yeah, that's right. Let's head to the home of the Bulldogs to see who could pull out the win. We head to the dog pound. Muldrow looking to snap a two-game skid and get their first conference win of the season. We'll pick things up with Muldrow up 13 to six. Reed Sutton just chucks it up and Derek Corbett rises and comes down with it. That's called letting your receivers go make plays. That drive would stall though here. Kiowa Coffin doesn't get fooled by the play action. He's there for the sack on Sutton. So it's Salisaw now with the ball and driving. Sam Sim Kilpatrick picks up some yards, but can't hang on to the ball. The Muldrow defense comes up with a huge recovery. Still a seven-point game. So back to Muldrow ball. Caden Chandler lines up at quarterback, and he's keeping this bad boy himself right up the gut for a nice chunk of yards and the first down. Later, Muldrow goes right back to Chandler, and Chandler goes right back to picking up yards. Bounces it to the outside, up the sideline for the first down. The Bulldogs take care of business at home. 27 to 6, the final day, get their first conference win of the season. Jonathan and I were just talking before we came back. This has to be our best week so far for Sweetest Play nominees. There's just every highlight we had tonight, there could be a play in there for us to I use. I think there was even two of them in that Fayetteville Rogers game. I'm excited to see what the candidates are when we announce them on Monday. Yeah, so you guys know Sweetest Play, Athlete of the Week, Defensive Save of the Week. Get that all to us so you can run it. But tomorrow, Arkansas, Georgia, quick, give me your keys. Who's going to come out on top? 
Well, it's whoever wakes up not sleep. It's an early kickoff, 11 a.m., 12 p.m. in Athens. At, if Arkansas can run the ball in Georgia, they'll have a fighting chance. So you talk about not sleepiness. We're going to head out, so we're not sleepy for that 11 a.m. kick. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we'll have your full coverage tomorrow as Arkansas takes on the second-ranked team in the country.